Hi guys and gals and all my non-binary friends. So today I am reviewing The Legend of Korra. Um, I don't know how old I was specifically when I, when Avatar um, The Last Airbender first came out, but I remember it, bro. Like Nickelodeon was really in the back. Like <gasps> Avatar was so good. And then I had watched it probably like, I'd say probably six months ago. I rewatched um, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, which is crazy because you know what? I paid for a subscription for Nick on um, Amazon Prime to watch Avatar The Last Airbender. And then like a month or two later, I don't know how much later, Netflix got it. And I was like, you know, it's okay because I really enjoyed it. So uh, I'm not hurt. I'm not hurt. <laughs> No, it was really fucking good. Like, I didn't regret it. And also just, anyway, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, peep the shirt. Super cute. Super cute. I got this from Lunchbox in um my mall. So if you have lunch, like, if Box Lunch. Box Lunch. That's what it's called. Box Lunch. I got this from Box Lunch. Oh, super cute. Anyway, I'm getting distracted and I'm not advertising for them. We're not doing that. Okay. But um yeah, I rewatched it and it was still so good. And you know when you're you're wa you're watching something from your childhood and you're like, I wonder is it still as good as I remember? And you you watch it and it's like, yep, yep, it's still it's it's still top tier. Avatar: The Last and Airbender is top tier. It's top tier. I don't care what no one says. I don't care what anyone has to say. It's top tier. I what what are you saying? Um and so. Even though I had never, uh, I had watched Avatar The Last Airbender when I was a child growing up and rewatched it recently. I had never watched Legend of Korra. Um, by the time Legend of Korra came out, I was kind of like in a whole different stage in my life. And I wasn't really watching TV like that, kind of. Um, I didn't have, like, anyways, it doesn't really matter. But I never really watched it. And then I was like, my brother was like, you should watch it. You should watch it. Because um, once I got the Avatar The Last Airbender, everyone kind of ended up just rewatching the series. And so after um we watched that he ended up watching legend of core and he was like you should definitely watch it it's good or whatever so i was like okay i'll give it a try and it is good it is i i will say this legend of core is good like you really and you'll enjoy the ride like i feel like unless you are going in just not just choosing to just choosing violence you will enjoy legend of core i think um Korra is a complex character well, None of these characters are really complex, and we'll get into that, but Korra is, she has, she's fighting her battles, you know what I'm saying? And she doesn't always fight them the way you might think she should fight them, but she's fighting them, and she's trying, and she's trying to push past her fear, and you have to respect her for that. Like, regardless of anything, this is a, this is a person trying to fight for the world, and it's like, that's hard that's hard regardless of how you feel about it, it's hard and so you know she make choices that you don't always agree with but it, 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 she make it through i guess <laughs> okay so i wasn't sure how i wanted to do this review but I, okay this is how i feel so the first season we get amon and uh Tyrick. Oh, by the way, the series is um, just like Avatar The Last Airbender it is chopped up in four uh, uh, books, Air, Spirit, Change, and Balance. And um, in the first season, which is the air season, I am, this is a spoiler, so obviously, but in the first season, you get Amon and Tarek are the enemies. And so, no, Tarlock. His name is Tarlock. <laughs> His name is Tarlock. Amon and Tarlock in, as the first villains. And Amon is an equalist who believes he... he. So there's benders and non-benders. We know in this avatar world, there are ben, people who can build, bend the elements and people who cannot. And so Amon really has taken up the plight for the non-benders. And honestly, personally, I, 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 I wasn't... I was mad. I was not mad. I was not upset. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I was not upset. Like, yeah, I bet them benders do be uh, oppressing these non-bending people. Like, who's going to stop them? Who's, who's going to stop them? 
who's going to stop the non-benders from oppressing benders? You know what I'm saying? And so I wasn't mad at Amon. Now, Tarlock was a different story. He was very manipulative and it really was frustrating watching Cora be manipulated by Tarlock. And it was so obvious. And when she has someone like Tenzin, who we, oh, Tenzin, who, y'all, anyway. You have someone like Tenzin who is trying to tell you like, oh, girl, no, this is not it. This is not it. This boy is not. He gonna, he's messy. He's mess, hun. And she's just like, okay. And just start. And she just believes whatever Tarlock says. And it's just like, no, but okay. So Tarlock was very manipulative. And when I'm watching this, I'm like, is Tarlock and Amon working together? Because it seems like everything Tarlock was doing was playing right into Amon's hand. But it's like they they weren't working together, but they kind of had the same goal, but at the same time not. And it was just very, it was it was just messy and very convenient for the other person. Like, Tarlock would do something and Amon would be like, okay, let me just slip right through here then. Thank you so much, bruv. And it was just like very annoying or whatever. And then you come to find out Tarlock and Amon are brothers and Amon is not Amon. Amon is I can't remember his real name or whatever because shit child I can barely remember Tarlock's name shit. I was calling him Tarik. Anyway. Um by the way Amon is going around I did not say that Amon is going around taking people's powers child yeah like he can he can blood bend we find out we find out the reason why because I guess I did that all wrong. Okay I'm just Amon is taking everybody powers. He's an equalist. He believes everyone should be equal. That no one should be able to bend the elements, right? So, core scare. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Young, the young kid is scared. The young, the kid is scared. The kid is scared. Okay, but it's, it's understandable, baby. You are the avatar. You spent your whole life being so hype about being the avatar, and all of a sudden, you know, you're not the avatar. You couldn't. You could possibly not be the avatar anymore. And so she's very afraid of a mom but she again like i said she she's trying to fight through that fear by not acknowledging it ignoring it and that does that's not good that doesn't that, that, that does her no good um but also proactively just being like okay square the fuck up do you want to you want to take my power square the fuck up you know what i'm saying it's just like oh like you poor that poor poor child like so much so much so much and so that's the first book and at this time Cora is with Tenzin who is Aang's son who is um an airbender he is the only airbender besides him and his um children are airbenders that are around um Aang has other children but they are not airbenders one of them is a waterbender who is Kaya and one of them is a non-bender who is Bumi but we don't get introduced to them until later um and so he's she's with Tenzin because she has not mastered the uh air and so that's why this uh book is called air because she needs to master air and so she's with Tenzin and what was my point god I'm fucking high <laughs> anyway okay what we doing what we doing what we doing anyway she's with Tenzin and she's trying to master air at the same time trying to fight this guy who could take her all her bending away so it don't even matter if I master air because he might take it that way anyway so she just, she's scared, but she's trying to fight through that or whatever. And that's what we see. And in the end, Amon and Tarlock chat somehow end up on a boat together and they explode in a river. That's, that's what happens. That is what happens. And you are grateful that Cora finally saw the light and it's all this, it's just mess. Okay. But it's, it's fine. Anyway, I guess. So anyway. Cut to the next. And by the end of the uh, air book, Cora has, Tarlock took away Cora's, uh, what is it? Tarlock took away Cora's bending, but somehow she was able to do air bending. And so that kind of, you know, got everything together. And then how did they get here? I don't know how they got healed, but somehow, oh, was it Qatar? Maybe it was Katara. Maybe Katara. That's not, nothing. Katara is here. She's alive and well. She's doing good. She's healing people. And she's old. Of course, Aang is not here because Aang can't be here. If Korra is going to be here, they can't exist in the same universe because they're the same person, essentially, you know? But not. They are reincarnations of each other. What? It doesn't matter. 
anyway it does matter but you know so um like i said somehow talak and amon end up in a river somewhere exploded and cora either has all her bending back or she has air don't really matter it do matter but she don't she gets her powers back in the end anyway next up next villain next chapter next chapter we get <clears throat> unalak and unalak spicy spicy tea unalak is cora's uncle okay unalak is cora, cora's uncle and unalak is also a sadistic fuck and so Unalak is able to commune with the spirits. He's able to help in the spirituality sense of things because Cora, not only did she not have air, but she's not in touch with the spiritual world because, of course, Aang had a better grasp on that because he was an air nomad who, you know, you know, was in yoga or whatever. But Cora is more of a, she's an icy girl, baby. She's an icy girl. She's brutal and she's an icy girl. That's all I can say. She's an icy girl. What can, what, what can you say? She's a waterbender. She's from a water tribe. Which water tribe? The Southern Water Tribe. She's from the Southern Water Tribe. But originally, child, her, her dad was the rightful uh, heir to the northern water tribe which is the main tribe which is also in charge of this which is also low-key in charge of the southern water tribe but they just live on so, so different things in that anyway somehow her daddy get cast off over here and her brother her uncle unalot gets to be head of the main tribe right and her dad gets to be chief of the the sub tribe the southern water tribe or whatever so then unalot come in and he like cora this was really bad, you know what I'm saying? You need to be connected with your spirituality. I can teach you things. I can teach you things. He do things like this. I'm telling y'all, this is what they do. Anyway, so he was like, I can teach you things. And mind you, she already has Tenzin with her, and he doesn't like that. He's like, you need to get away from Tenzin. First red flag, abusers always try to get you isolated, just so you know. Just so you know. Anyway, so... He's like, you need to get away from Tenzin. Your father's not listening. He's the reason why you... He, him and Tenzin are the reason why you was locked up, girl. Him and Tenzin are the reason you was locked up, girl. Because Tidbit, Cora didn't get to have a normal um, childhood. Like, she had to stay... She didn't get to do what Aang did and tra travel all over the world in his, during his childhood when he was, like, 11 and stuff. Um, she had, they basically kept her locked down in the Southern Water Tribe and she really hated that. That's why she was begging Tenzin to take her to the city and Tenzin says no. And she, she said, girl, I'm going anyway, period. She's an icy girl. She's going anyway, period. So she goes, she goes, she goes over, she gone, she gone, she gone to the uh, Republic City. She shut it down. You know what I'm saying? And that's when all the stuff started popping up. But anyway, so what I like is this. Uzun like was like, he, he, they the reason why you were stuck in the Southern World Trap the whole time anyway, girl. So you really need to listen to me. I'm going to teach you how to do this. And we're going to be good. And she was like, you know what? You right. I'm going to fall for the same thing I did in the first season. Because the, the writers of this story clearly aren't very uh, creative. So yeah, I'm going to fall behind another person who's clearly manipulating me. And let's go do that. Let's go do some spirit stuff. And so Unalak convinces Cora to um, uh, uh, take off the portal from, uh, open the portal to the spirit world, which was closed originally. And we get to find out the first air, uh, the first avatar, how he came to be, um, which was a beautiful story. The story of Juan and how, um, and it's also kind of interesting because Vatu kind of was literally Unalak, right? So Vatu tricks Juan into separating himself from, oh, uh, what was her name? Shit. Oh, was it so good? What was the girl's name? Rava. Vatu convinces Juan to separate him from Rava. He manipulates him to, into doing that because he's saying she's been fighting me for years and he does that and that throws the world on balance and that's how we get, we get the Avatar because rava and Juan got to get together so they can control all the elements because Juan can take on a lot of elements but he can't control all of them without um rava and so they do it they do it and, 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 
or whatever. And so we get this cycle of the avatar being ma manipulated and she opens the portal and that was, lo and behold, turns out Mr. Unalak had been going through, going to the spirit world this whole time. And so he was conversing and he was uh, making schemes and plotting and, and all these things with Vatu this whole time, child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole time. He been talking to a spirit in the spirit world that's been locked up in a cage since the first uh, Avatar was around. You know what I'm saying? Real shady shit. I told you he was sadistic fuck. Anyway, so Cora opens the porter and all hell break loose. Batu just turning all the spirits evil and all this shit. It's just raggedy. It's just real raggedy and shit is just fucked up. So then Cora got to become a big old avatar and Batu, I mean, and Unalak becomes like a big old avatar demon. I mean, avatar spirit of bad and Cora becomes the big avatar spirit of good and they fighting it out and then Cora takes, they take Rava out of Cora and she's, and it's all these Terrible things. Shit, it's bad. It's bad. They take, they take it out of Cora. Like so, first they took her bending. First they came for her bending. Then they came for her actual spirit of good and just sucked it out of her. Literally, literally, we watch it happen. We watch it happen. And so they take her spirit of good out of her. And Cora's like fucked up. She is fucked up. Okay, but. Somehow we make it through. We make it through. We get rid of uh Unalak. Poof, he's gone. And Cora makes the decision to keep the portal open because Juan didn't know everything. Juan is the one that really threw the world off balance in the first place. So who is he to close off the portal? Because Juan is the original um avatar, like I said, and he closed off the portal to the spirit world because he just like humans are ghetto like humans are ghetto like they, they gotta go they gotta go their own way or whatever so Cora decides fuck that he don't know everything she gonna undo this she gonna keep it unlocked keep the city unlocked okay and so the Republic City which is where she resides basically is um overflowing with you know spirit energy and spirit binds and spirits and everything it's just it's beautiful or whatever and so then comes change and change is third book slash third season and we get zahar or zahir i think it's zahar it's zahar and is it let's call him z we get z and um before i got to this chapter for some reason i did some someone had said something like z should have been the last um enemy he was the best da, 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 whatever he didn't really leave that big of an impression on me you know what I'm saying? But all of these enemies are there for a reason. They're there to teach Cora something. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's to teach her about the plight of the non-benders, whatever it, whether it's to teach her about the um the spirit world. Because regardless of Un Unalak's nefarious shit, he connected her to the spirit world when Tenzin couldn't or whatever. And so then you get Zaheer. And the reason why people love Zaheer is because he speaks truth to power. He's literally the guy who's like, fuck all this shit, burn it down, anarchy. And like, first of all, let's set something up here. Anarchy is not actually the uh, the uh, want of chaos and riots and looting. Anarchy is the belief that um, if it was government creates anarchy, government creates chaos riots and looters people wouldn't do crime and do criminal things if it wasn't there for a government if people were able if people didn't have a government to rule them then they would just be uh good you know what i'm saying like they would just be chilling that's the actual theory behind anarchy but you know that's not i'm not here for my soapbox but fuck it burn everything down <laughs> like that's here like that's it here he doesn't he thinks that these people are tyrannical um dictators authoritarian uh queens and all this shit and when we get to here while while we're getting to here we are finally seeing cora not just dealing with republic city which is where she moved after she found after she got old enough and tenzi refused but she just said i'm going anywhere and you're gonna teach me regardless um 
she's not just dealing with Republic City. She's not just dealing with her homeland, the Northern Tribe and the Southern Tribe and all this stuff. No, now she's actually dealing with the Earth Kingdom and she's having to deal with these people who are in charge. I mean, she had to deal with Raikou, who is the um, president in Republic City and how he just wouldn't listen to her. Like all of these people who are in charge, who are supposed to respect her as the Avatar, just didn't respect her counsel, would try to leave her out of things, of decision making because they look over her or whatever. And she was that she was dealing with that and struggling with that for the past three seasons um and also we get to see the the earth bending queen this is the first time we ever interacted with her and mind you so zaheer happens right well zaheer after cora and she does that and the portal is uh, open um the the some of the nun benders i don't know if it was some or all of the nun benders um this is gonna be a long video i already know but anyway all of the nun benders become um some of the nun benders or all i don't know i don't remember them specifying become airbenders including um boomy who is i talked about earlier was ang's son um who, who ang it was it's ang's son ang's first son who did not have any uh bending skills um and so he becomes an airbender and so Cora and Tenzin decide that their new mission, their whole destiny for them being together is to revive the Air Nation, which I thought was beautiful. I was like, wow, that's good job. That was just great. That was just, ah, that was good. Good job. That was actually a good decision because you guys suck. So that was really good. Um, and so by so boomy gets powers but zaheer who has been locked up and is the original reason why tenzin and her father tenzin and cora's father i don't remember what his name is originally wanted to keep cora stuck in the southern war of the tribe to begin with because zaheer had decided that it is upon him to kill the avatar because the, if there's no avatar it, i mean he has to kill leaders and the avatar so that the there's no like head like there's no head there's just everyone just out there making it you know what i'm saying just out there making it is what he believes and so he goes after cora he gets her then he don't have her and then something it's uh, a cat and mouse chase ensues and so then he's like i'm tired of shit he almost has her but the earth queen is pissed off because the earth queen cora has to deal with her because she's still in earth airbenders who people who have been to people in the earth nation earth nation earth kingdom who she um who are her subjects she who are were non-benders but after cora opened the portal and turned into airbenders she's taking these people and snatching them up and tenzin and cora are out here trying to get these people in like they're looking for new airbenders. They don't know that she's doing this, but they're looking for new airbenders. And they just so happen to find out that she's doing this. And so the queen is trying to uh, capture Cora because Cora them take those airbenders away from her. Like they steal her, uh, her subjects, she calls them, and her soldiers. She was going to kill them people, baby. She was going to take them right out to war. Anyway, it don't really matter. It does, but it don't. Anyway, so... Cora takes the airbenders and so the queen is pissed and she tries to trap Cora and she thinks that she has Cora and so Zaheer goes and tries to get Cora from the queen and Cora gets away from the people that had her so the queen don't really have her she find he finds that out and he's like boom I don't even like leaders he said boom I don't even like leaders I don't even like leaders you'll die you're dead he literally took the breath he took the breath out of that woman <gasps> gone and she was dead and i was like oh this nigga dropping bodies this nigga dropping bodies i was like whoa this is a, this nigga is dropping bodies like what like that was crazy i will say that was crazy and i feel like that's why probably a lot of people liked him and then he got on the mic and he was like this shit is over all you people that think you in charge you not who you think you is i killed that motherfucker's head is on a pot and riots ensue and the earth kingdom is no longer safe and buildings are burning and people got to get people out and all it's bad i mean it's bad because as soon as tyrannical leaders are killed uh i mean that is that is what happens though like when even when like let's take for instance the united states when they kill these people who are in charge who they say are dictators 
chaos do it too. And I'm not saying that dictators should still be in charge. I'm not. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, when there's a social, like, when there's a social construct and, like, people just say, hey, fuck that. People, especially if it's been an oppressive one, people don't start doing what the fuck they got to do type shit. Anyway. So, um, Rise and Sue and the King, uh, the Earth kingdom is unstable so Korra gotta fight Korra gotta fight and that same shit that um that um Zaheer did to that queen to the earth queen that take sucking sucking the life taking the air literally taking the breath out of this woman the breath of life out of this woman yeah he did it to Korra he he basically he almost did it to Korra she uh that woman almost died that that woman almost Die. So again, we, we get air in the first chapter and they take her bending away, but she gets it back. Then in the second cha chapter, we get spirits and they literally take the good spirit, which is um Rava, out of her. Right, 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 all right, y'all, I'll, I'll keep it up. And then we get change and they take the air out of her. They try to take mama's air and she... It definitely caused the change. And we see that change in um, the fourth chapter, which is actually called Balance. And Korra is off balance. We get to Korra in the, the fourth chapter and we get Kovira. Kovira is, she was a soldier for this one woman and then the one woman didn't step up. She didn't step up in the Earth Kingdom when they needed her most. So Kavira said, fuck that. I'm going to do it. If you ain't going to do it, I'm going to do it. And so she went out and she decided she was going to go and restore the whole Earth Kingdom and reunite the whole Earth Kingdom after Zaheer. Because, I mean, he, he didn't kill Korra and they did make it through and they did they did lock him up again. They didn't kill him, but they did lock him up again. That nigga was flying. That shit was crazy. I'm not going to lie. That was, good. That, that was a good one. Um, but after Zaheer um, happens, Kavir goes to the Earth Kingdom to try to reunite it. But she agrees that she's only there to reunite the kingdom. And then she's going to hand it off to the uh, um, next to kin to the queen, who, who is Wu. Um, who is just some young kid who don't know shit about shit and is just excited to be big, big shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, yeah, that's, that, that's the balance. And so we find Cora changed from the fact that these motherfuckers have sucked, took their bending, they changed, they took her bending away. They took her, uh, good spirit in. They try to take her breath away. Okay. Mama is disturbed. Okay. And I love this idea of dealing with mental health, like the actual mental health of heroes and, and characters that we like really like, like, I mean, not really like the main Protect. I love dealing with that. Like these people go through traumatic shit, and we're just supposed to expect that they're just able to take it. And it's not gonna have a toll on who they are as people. Wrong, wrong, wrong. They might be soup. They might have powers. They might have all these things, but they are still human. They still go through shit. They still have to deal with the traumatic shit that has happened to them. And I think that's very important to represent in cartoons and TV shows that are geared towards anybody really because people need to realize how important it is to deal with the trauma that has happened to you a lot of the bad things that happen in this world right now all of the bad things that happen in this world right now is because of trauma because of someone else fucking someone else over and then them not dealing with the fact that someone gonna fuck them over but anyway so Cora's traumatized she she's just not she's just not on her game and so we get a time jump um, from three years from when Zaheer literally took the breath out of her and gave it, she got it back somehow. Um, and her, now we're seeing her now in the fourth chapter. The fourth chapter is, uh, three years after and Kovira has got like 91% of the earth kingdom back reunited and kind of stabilized depending on how your definition of stable because she is a tyrant like she's just another tyrant she's just under the tyrant she's literally what Zaheer was trying to get rid of but when you do it in the manner that Zaheer did it you just leave 
places for tyrants to feel. And so she's just another tyrant. She's just strong arming these people who are vulnerable, who need her, and not giving a fuck unless they do, do about what she wants them to do. And if they don't do what she wants them to do, she'll let them starve. She'll let them die. It doesn't matter. Um, and so um, she's doing that. And so but while she's doing that, Cora is off in hiding. No one knows where Cora is. Everyone thinks that she's in the Southern Water Trap that's in Republic City. And everyone in Republic City, wait, no, yeah. And everyone in the Southern Water Trap think that she's in Republic City. Well, she is in Republic City. She's been in Republic City for about six months. And she's not doing great. She's literally alone. She's, she's alone. She's isolated herself, which is usually, like I said, signs of like just not... Whenever you're isolated, it's, it's usually not a great sign. Like, a, it's okay to be alone, but it's not okay to be lonely and isolated. Okay, keep that in mind. So she's she's seeing things. She's she's really dealing with her trauma, like up close and personal, or whatever. And then we get to see Tov, and throughout this show, um, the show, they have been showing us show people from um Avatar: The Last Airbender because yeah. Angus has passed, but that doesn't mean that his whole generation is gone. I mean, Ang himself was already 100 years old, so he was already, you know, way past due anyway. But the people in his life, does that doesn't necessarily mean they are gone. And so we get, we get to see Katara, and I think in the late third season, early, in the third season, that's when we start to get to see Zuko and he's really old for like, he, he they, they roar him down or whatever. Anyway, and then the fourth season we get to see Toph. Now we've seen Toph's daughter who is a, ugh, the head of, she's the chief of police of Republic City, gross, Lin Beifong. But Toph was also chief of police of Republic City, gross. And so um, Toph doesn't have the best relationship with her daughter and daughters because the Kovira, the Kovira, Kovira the, she used to work for Toph's other daughter, Sue, who is in charge of a uh, a sovereign city state in the Earth Kingdom nation area or whatever, and so uh, Sue is big big shit and Lynn is big shit too or whatever. And Toph doesn't really have the best relationships with them. They didn't get to know their fathers. They just they. Toph, you know, Toph is just, yeah, it's not a big deal. Let's just keep it moving, that type of person. And they, that's not really a good way to raise children. If y'all didn't know that, uh, it's not the best kind of environment for children. They need people to care about their emotional, mental, physical well-being. Like, they need that real rounded environment to grow up to be full fledgings, okay? And Toph just really wasn't giving it for the girls. And so... It left a chasm. Well, sometimes I'll be pulling that words. I'm like, how do you know that word? And also, is that really how you're supposed to use it? So we'll find out. It left a hole in the family to where Sue and Lynn weren't close, and Sue and Toph and Lynn weren't close. None of them liked each other. But Sue was able to reconcile with um her her mom because she was able to find her own. In her life like she was able to do what she wanted to do she was able to be her own person and rebel and do whatever she had to do and lynn decided to not do that lynn decided to try to replicate her mother and she thought that would make her mother proud and it didn't and so it pissed her off that her sue wasn't making her mom proud but her mom just didn't care enough to like stop her which is bad and then lynn is trying to make her mom proud and trying to stop Sue from doing what she want to do. And it's just like, girl, mind your business and just find out, do do what you want to do. Like, it's not mind your business. I care about your sister, but like, what are you doing? Like, you're going to arrest me. You're going to arrest me. Like, and that was, anyway. So, Kovira has, was an orphan that Sue um, raised to be a soldier for her, which, I, yeah, I bet she did have some mental issues. And so, Kovira manip I don't want to say manip Kovira got Sue Batar Jr., which is Sue's oldest son. 
she got him hooked baby she got him hooked line and sinker and so he's really smart really really good with the brain or whatever and so she takes him around the world fixing the kingdom and they fall in love and or whatever and so now it's sue toff lynn cora because cora ends up trying to find herself by like going away from people and she ends up in the swamp because the spirits like the spirit bonds and stuff like that led her there and that leads her to talk and talk is trying to teach her how to connect but she's still holding on because she's traumatized or whatever and so in the end it, it's, it's kovira kovira beat her ass and that really fucked her up because she thought she was ready for her return and she wasn't and we knew she wasn't ready but you know because she didn't get the metal out the metal was bad like poison oh my god anyway so yeah she has to fight through this and it ends up being like a showdown and Kavira I think Kavira was really about like fighting like man like about it was really about dealing with latent trauma like the fact that Kovira was an orphan she felt abandoned by her family and then she was taken in by Sue and then Sue doesn't really take her in as family like right she she's her mentor she's her apprentice she's her soldier she's her strong man but she's not her daughter she's not a part of the family right and so when Kovira sees that sue not only isn't really even though sue took her in she's not really trying to take up for the earth kingdom which i don't i don't i don't, I don't hate sue for not trying to grab power when it was out there um take back the earth kingdom Kavira sees that as her like what 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 do you care about like I thought you cared about things but it don't really seem like you care about things like how are you not gonna fight for our home like how are you not that's how she felt and it's like how are you not gonna fight for our home and it's like I'm just your soldier like what's going on not that Sue said that but it's like girl girl basically you said that I'm your soldier girl I'm your soldier and it's like what do you care about besides this utopia that you've created for you and your family and a bunch of rich people type shit and so that is what Kavira is working out while also trying to occupy and take up everything and she refuses to uh when it's time to give it up to the next of kin she refuses to give it up because she's worked this hard to reunite all these people and she's not going to give it up to somebody just because they they were related to, to someone who was in charge like you sound crazy you sound stupid and so she fights and she fights like hell she fights like hell she don't she don't play okay mama does not play mama does mama mama gets things done okay and so um it really takes cora a lot to kind of because she's already dealing with herself and she's trying to work through that stuff while also being there because she feels like she's abandoned people because she wasn't there for them all these three years when they've been trying to reunite the earth kingdom and stuff like that and so She's working through that and trying to rush her process so she can get back to saving everybody. It's like, girl, you got to work on you, fix yourself, so then you can really come to your best. And that's why when she comes back to Kavir, she's worked through her issues. She's gotten that metal out of her. She's reconnected with her people. And she's like, I understand you because I was there. I was there upset with everything that I, I wasn't told, upset with the people that I thought I could trust, but turns out I couldn't trust. I understand feeling abandonment. I get that. And I understand I understand it. That's why I can't kill you. And I'm not going to kill you. You know what I'm saying? I love that you guys, you kept with the not killing. You know what I'm saying? Um, Aang could not kill um, old dude name, old dude, whatever his name was. The war, the fire lord. But he took his bending away. Korra could not kill Kovira, but I think she went to prison, which I'm here for prison, but whatever. Um, But yeah, I, this video is long. And if anybody could ever get to it, shout out to you but because we finna go into the other part i'm probably just gonna put this whole up because fuck it editing yeah this is about to be a crazy video anyway not really but i got some issues i got some issues i got some issues okay like i said it was a good story i you see how i told the story but i really didn't go into detail about the characters and their development besides Cora, who it's very repetitive until she gets that big change. You notice how I, I didn't go care of the character? You wonder why that is? 
these characters are one dimensional. Let's start off with Cora. Cora is aggressive. Cora, Cora doesn't think things through. Cora, Cora is constantly trying to abandon Tenzin for the next shiny teacher that can teach her something new and cool. Cora, but Cora cares. You know what I'm saying? She cares and she wants to do a, a good job, but she, uh, Asami. Asami is nice. Asami is not your typical rich girl. She actually cares. She's not a, a, a bender, but she is going to try to, she's going to hold her own. And not only that, but she's going to probably make something or know something about what they're dealing with so that she can get us out of something. She's cool. That's it. Mako. I ain't got no, I, ain't got, I, I got nothing for my, Mako. I have literally nothing for Mako. I, I have literally nothing for Mako. Um, Tenzin, Tenzin really wants to keep, I mean, help rebuild the Air Nation. He's trying to do it with his own semen. And then after the solstice, he tries to reunite everyone. You know what I'm saying? And that's really nice. That's really nice. But Tenzin is also not, y'all don't give Tenzin anything. Y'all don't give Tenzin anything. Tenzin is not clutch, clutch. Uh, maybe he'll get a theory right for sure. He'll get, he'll tell you, okay, that person is not great. But other than that, Tenzin, Tenzin is not coming in the half. He's not coming when there's four seconds on the clock left. It's like, it's like, why are y'all hoeing this person? Why are y'all hoeing him? Y'all trying to put him up as her teacher. And then you want us to feel like, oh, damn, why she always abandoned this nigga? But every time something, the shit is down, it's like, who is there to call? Not Tenzin. The fuck? Um, Janora, Janora, I really, okay, it's like Tenzin can't connect core to the spiritual world, but Janora can, who is, um, Tenzin's oldest daughter, but Janora always getting captured. It's so annoying, like, why is Janora always getting captured? Janora is very smart, Janora, Janora is connected to the spirit, she, she can tell you things, she, she understands, it's like, okay, I understand, she, she's not, but she's also an airbender, y'all, acting like this woman is not an airbender, why is she always getting caught, it was so frustrating. Iki, I just wrote Iki, so, because, nothing lynn bay funk why do y'all want us to hate all of these women lynn bay funk there is nothing about lynn that makes you want to like her she is just annoying she don't be knowing what she like she yeah the, the first season she she like yeah okay they can play this game and i'm gonna secure the secure secure the building the building gets fucked up she saves core but it's like these motherfuckers was fucking people up. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, these characters, like, the only person that can actually do something is Cora. It's like, why? Why? Why do you have to downplay other characters to lift up other characters? Like, so stupid. Boomy is, um, Tenzin's brother, Aang's first son. Uh, he's a non-bender who is also, who so happens to be, like, I think he's, like, he works... He's high up in the military in the Fire Nation, but I think he's retired now, I think. I don't know. But um, he's a non-bender, but he gets to be an airbender, which I really didn't like that. It's like, I appreciate the non-benders, and I feel like y'all don't really appreciate the non-benders. The non-benders are there to tell people that you can still fight these great big fights without... Be, without needing to control the elements you know what i'm saying the non-benders are there to let children know that these are not just stories about el uh, elementalists i don't even know if that's really what you would call them but these are stories about real people who can still fight Sokka is great because Sokka can fight and he's he doesn't have any powers come on now kaya is um ang's only daughter and final child i think i'm pretty sure tenzin is the youngest though and she's a waterbender because her mother is katara and that's it that's it, girl. Girl, girl, don't girl. And what, what, what else we got? What, what, what else can I say about her? What else? Y'all tell me what else I can say about Kaya, cause they, I, they didn't tell me nothing else I can say about Kaya. Anyway, oh, I skipped over Milo. I don't know how this Milo. Milo, I thought I was gonna like him, and he just, they just made him annoying. Like the fourth season when he's bossing people around and trying to make like. Mm, you're annoying. You always trying to yell at women. I noticed that y'all always got Milo yelling at girls and women. Ew. Um, Derek and Julie. 
the show y'all really pissed me off with that whole um asami's dad getting a uh redemption arc and Varric in the early season getting a redemption arc well no he kind of got anyway it doesn't really Varric getting a redemption arc. it's like not one but two industrialist capitalists get redemption arcs for fucking what they was plotting on my homies enterprise why do they get a redemption arc they was plotting on my homies enterprise prize why do they get a redemption arc i guess but Varric Varric is annoying. Well, Varric is funny for a comic relief. But Varric doesn't appreciate Julie. And he still ends up with her. Because Julie is a masochist, I guess. and But she wants her, him to take her seriously. And he does eventually, I guess, at the end. But she, she finally finds her worth. But at the same time, she don't really. Because the only reason she did is because she was trying to save his ass. So it's like, girl. Varric doesn't, hashtag Varric does not deserve Julie. Uh, I, I wrote down Naga and Pabu solely off of the strength of them not um having any kind of distinctive like character traits or like any really entertaining outside moments because like y'all have these two um pets reminiscent of Momo and Appa but y'all don't make them charming and cute and lovable and i just don't like that i like Nagi and Pabu, but i wish i would have like liked them more you know what i'm saying i wish i would have liked all these characters more um bolin i loved bolin was my favorite character um but bolin was also like at the end when they used him to try like all that stuff with him and his girlfriend it's just like why y'all gotta ruin Bolin? Why y'all gotta ruin Bolin? Like, uh, yeah, he comes back and he he helps, but it's like, it, be real about it. Bolin is dealing with someone like he if he's in love. Why would he not listen to her? Why would especially when he sees what it does to her family? Like it just don't. Ugh, like y'all are so frustrated with these characters. And I did write down Wu because I wanted to make a statement. Wu is the um future king of the earth kingdom who was supposed to get the earth kingdom after uh kavara kavara got done reuniting it but he, he didn't get it um he had to he ended up getting it but then he gives it away but anyway i brought up Wu specifically because the main characters are Korra, asami maku tenzu i mean tenzin bolin and I'll say Janora too, because Janora has a good amount of like plot um going on. Like she even gets a little boyfriend or whatever. Uh, and let me see. Cora is brown. Cora is brown. Cora, Cora is brown. Asami is pale as fuck. Maku is pale as fuck. Tenzin is pale as shit. Janora, pale as hell. Bo uh, did I say Bolin? Bolin pale as hell. He's Michael brother pale. And then we get Wu at the end who kind of joins their group and he's brown. He is brown. But he don't... He's gross. And like you're, he's annoying. You don't really like him until the end when he gives up his kingdom to like give, make it like a dem democracy, which is cool. But it's like, why y'all make this character that y'all bring at the end, the last minute, that's kind of like a, a part of the group now, the deeper tone. But everybody else that core is a hang around is pale as fuck. When we had Avatar, it was way more diverse than what I saw. And this this TV show, Korra is, not only is it not diverse on screen, but it's not diverse when it comes to the voice actors. And I'm not sure how that writer's room is looking, but chow, I can only imagine because don't get me wrong. Like I said, the story was cool. The story was good. A lot of it, they, they did, uh, like, it was good things. There were good things in it. But it felt, it wasn't as, it, it wasn't, y'all, it was wasted potential. Y'all didn't go deep enough. Y'all didn't let us enjoy these characters. Y'all didn't really write these characters. You were too pushy, too busy, busy pushing plot. Like, the, the plot had to push right into the next plot, like, on its face. And I understand y'all had 13 episodes every season, and there's four seasons, which is, like, 52 episodes. But if you were good, if you were better at your job, you could have did a great job. But yeah, this video is almost an hour long, which is insane, Jasmine. But okay, um, I love 
Avatar The Last Airbender and I really enjoyed Korra. I wish that you guys were better at writing the stories um but I appreciate what I got to see and I appreciate being able to see these characters again older whether Toph was a chief of fucking police like why did y'all have to ruin Toph and make her a bad mom like the tough girl gotta be the bad mom right really really like the tough woman gotta be a bad girl that can't keep a man okay we're really breaking boundaries with that one huh um okay I just I love these stories and I this this series and I feel like they I would love to see another Avatar series because even though Korra has its faults it's still an enjoyable show and I know in the right hands the story could be even more magical. Ooh, okay. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you stay to the end of the video, you must really love this show or something about you must really enjoy me. Either way, I'm right with you. <laughs> um, please, 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 please check out The Legend of Korra. Tell me how you feel. If you already watched it, comment down below. Um, and take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Wash your hands. Wash your face. Wear a mask. Wash your ass. And don't be a fucking asshole. Bye.